I kill you. Bonjour. In this video, I'm going to do a six month review for this little fella, the XP Dios. The review will follow, and in the review, I say it's a three month review. I have no concept of time whatsoever. It's actually been six months, so please enjoy. Yes, this is actually a video that I've made notes for. I usually just shoot from the lip, and I've got a big enough lip. This time, because I'm doing a three month review for my XP Dios, I thought I'd better make notes because there's plenty to say about this great machine. First of all, the date, in brackets, month I got Dios. Can't remember, but it was sometime late last year. And I've been out quite a few times with it since. I have hunted quite a few different types of land in all sorts of conditions with the Dios, including quite sandy soil along the sides of rivers, very contaminated land outside mines and outside big buildings, i.e. mansions where people have just been throwing stuff all over the place and there's a lot of contamination. Ploughed land, woodland, I haven't done many woodlands but it's been pretty varied, it's been hardwood, softwood, so there's been acidic soils and there's also been hard packed soils, hard packed footpaths, a local park which was absolutely strewn with trash, a site where there used to be a fair, in fact there still is a fair every year, which is also strewn with trash. Very rocky pasture in upland areas, waterlogged pasture, and also in the local fields on a night to see what the backlit screen was like. And that's been a mixture of various sorts of pasture and ploughed. I've got to say, the Deus has handled all of those conditions with no problem at all. But you will notice that I've missed beach off there. I live quite a long way inland, so I tend not to do any beach hunting. If you're looking for recommended settings on beaches with any machine, I'm not your guy. I tend to hunt inland and mostly in upland areas. The 11 inch coil was just about out when I bought this, but I decided to go for the 9 and then possibly upgrade to the 11. I still might upgrade to the 11, but I found that this coil is very versatile, it goes nice and deep in pasture and it's small enough to go around the trashy areas on dirty, really contaminated sites. The only accessories that I've had have been WS5 headphones. I went for the big padded headphones because I live in the north of England and it's damn cold up here. Because of the shape of my head and lack of hair, I need something that fits well over here and won't fall off. That's why I went for the WS5s. They've been great, no problems at all with them, very comfortable. Actually there is one more accessory, which is a control box cover. That, I can't remember where I got that from, it's off the internet somewhere. It may have been King Digger, but I don't think it was, I'm not sure. If I didn't get it off him, I'm sure he does them. Uh, the link's in the video description. But that's been nice, been good. It's protected it from rain and my dirty fingers as well. As far as programs go, really the only two I've used are Deus Fast for ploughed land. Uh, that was in 18 kilohertz and really just bup, 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 bup. very fast. Um, generally hunting for shallow targets and the other program I've used, which I use probably 90% of the time, is, uh, what is it, not XP power, GM power. And I reduce the kilohertz to 12 just to give it that little bit extra depth. And I set the ground balance to tracking because quite often ground conditions can change very quickly and it reacts quickly to that. So if you're watching the sensitivity, one minute it might be 90. Next minute it might be 75 if you're in a particularly contaminated area. I like that. Goes nice and deep, gives good responses, and I can still use it fairly fast. Although I do find with a 12 kilohertz, if I go that little bit slower, it does pick out the deeper signals better than the 18 kilohertz. Now as far as the features of the DSCO, apart from it being wireless, which is great, look at that. That's connected to that, which is connected to the headphones all wirelessly. You're not tripping over any wires. Uh, it makes it lighter. 
And I think it makes it more responsive as well. I've had quite a few detectors, especially the cheaper ones where the cable is wrapped around the shaft and if you get that rubbing it can cause interference. You don't get any of that with the Dios. Very good. At first I did think wireless was a bit of a gimmick, but I really, really like it. So apart from the wireless, in this results section, how I've found the various things connected with the Dios, I've tried to pick things that do apply to all detectors, or certainly quite a lot of them. So first of all, ease of use. Well, given the fact that it can go from that tall to that tall, means that you can be the world's tallest fella, right down to a small boy, i.e. my son, who loves to use this. Big and tall, short and small, everybody can use this detector, and it's so light. And the basic settings are good enough for most of your hunting. Unless you're gonna be a real Jedi master with it, you don't need to fanny about with the settings. They're very good. But if you did want to fanny about with them and become a Jedi master, it is very easy to customize and it's pretty easy to understand as well. But that's me saying that and that's coming from somebody who has pretty much mastered the E-Track which, as we know, is an extremely difficult machine to master. Took me about six months just to know <laughs> the basics of what I was doing with it. Design, that really goes hand in hand with ease of use. It's set at a lovely angle. This just pops off. If it's particularly wet, just put that in your pocket. Have it just as a strictly sound operated machine. It's just excellent. This you can wear on here, you can clip it on your belt, that's absolutely excellent. Very easy to clean as well, although you can tell A that I've used it and B that I haven't cleaned it very much because it's still covered in muck. Battery life is excellent. I think the batteries are meant to last 20 plus hours, certainly do that no problem at all. I do tend to go on very short hunts, but I can go out with a full battery and still come back with a full battery and that is on the coil, control box and headphones. All of them are very energy efficient. When it comes to charging them there's a transformer plug that just plugs into your socket. One lead comes out, there's a three-way splitter, clip the charger on here, plug the charger in here, plug the last charger into your headphones and you can charge all three things at once. It doesn't take long to charge and it's just really well thought out. Target ID. Um, Generally it's pretty good, uh, it does suffer at depth, but it does with a lot of detectors as well. It does generally give a repeatable signal, that way and that way. And the target numbers are quite consistent in various soil conditions as well, so really no, no complaints there, very good. But I will say target ID does alter if you alter the kilohertz, if you alter the frequency that the machine's pushing out. The higher frequencies will, will result in a higher reading. For example, sixpences will generally read between 70 and 75 or so, depending on when they were manufactured and what type of soil they're in. That's in 12 kilohertz. Step it up to 18 kilohertz and that reads higher. Might read 76 to 79 or so uh, off the top of my head. It does read a little bit higher. So if you step down to 8 kilohertz, it'll read a lot lower. 4 kilohertz it'll read lower again so just bear that in mind because some people like to dig say nothing below 40 if you step the kilohertz down your better signals might read below that as far as coke goes the Dios does detect coke it does tend to give quite a consistent reading uh, I normally use 12 kilohertz and it gives between 27 and 30 so it's quite easy to ignore the main difference I do find between this and the E-Track is that the E-Track will just see straight through coke. Numerous times I've dug pennies up 9-10 inches below a fist sized lump of coke. The Deus would just read the coke, wouldn't see through it. But how many times do you dig up coins from underneath coke? Not very often. It's often good to know that there's coke there because quite often where there's coke there's good stuff as well. Uh, sounds. As far as the sounds go, I personally don't find the sounds as stimulating as the E-Track. I tend to use the E-Track in four-tone ferrous 
and when you go over a bit of silver you get a lovely clean sharp tone you can get a bit of a broken tone with the Deos but a good target is still quite easily recognizable you can of course alter the tones I think I tend to use it in four tones and that's good enough for me so generally the lower the target is reading on the screen i.e. the ID numbers the lower the tone the higher it's reading the higher the tone tones are generally pretty good and certainly better than a lot of other detectors as far as the tones go it does tend to give a little bit of a crackle around iron not always I've dug more iron with this than I have with the e-track and it tends to be at depth the surface iron tends to be quite recognizable I do tend to dig the tricky signals and a few of those have turned out to be iron as you'll have seen in one of my previous videos one of my last iron targets was a key about this long and that was a crack and find I probably would have ignored that with the e-track so I don't mind digging the odd bit of iron the response time of this machine is absolutely lightning although it can be adjusted from 1 to 5 it is absolutely as quick as a fly put three targets out ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -bum, ba bum ba bum ba bum you wouldn't get any bleeding signals i.e. you wouldn't get this signal bleeding into this one if you're going fast or should I say this one wouldn't mask that one you'd get three distinct signals mine lab although they are excellent at depth and I don't get me wrong I love the e-track it's quite a slow machine to use compared to the Deos and on ploughed fields when you're really searching for hotspots this is really quick to get to them you can literally just go bam 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 right across the field until you start hitting the signals it's that quick I'm, I'm extremely impressed with that discrimination can be adjusted just very effective I tend to have it on about oh 6.8 it's certainly below 10 so it's only knocking out the really big iron I have it set quite low because I want it to read pretty much everything that's in the ground so for depth in pasture which is my domain I tend to go for it less than 10 now as far as depth goes uh, I've been extremely impressed and as many of you know I'm a real demon for depth lugging that grip big e-track around with that huge 18 inch coil and the harness I love to get deep although this is a really small 9 inch coil you, and you wouldn't think it would go deep it does punch down pretty deep and you can't adjust it to go crazy deep although the discrimination will suffer and you'll end up digging a lot of crap the general setting that I use GM power with those little tweaks will easily pull up half pennies and pennies the pre decimal ones from eight nine inches possibly deeper in good soil I mean that's a good depth I always thought of it just as a machine for skimming on ploughed land until I started using it in pasture and I think when I get the 11 inch coil it it might be a real eye opener um, as far as the depth goes if I stick with these same settings I can see me only bringing the e-track out for special occasions it's that good and a lot of people will be shocked for me to say that oh my I'm shocked myself but it is very good at depth considering the size of this little coil and that's what I'm basing it on the 9 inch coil and a few examples of what I've found at what I would call you know a reasonable depth for this size coil is as follows Roman coin which was a grot i.e. a manky old bronze at about 6 inches on pasture it's a reasonable depth gave a good signal William III shilling at about four inches on ploughed that gave a banging signal loads of sixpences this year in fact that's what I've been specializing in is the silver sixpence this year they've been down to about eight inches all of them have given proper diggable signals and they're not very big coins modern half pences this is the decimal ones those awful little coppery things they give an absolutely banging signal and I found those down to about seven inches and when you dig seven inches for one of those crappy little coins you're not best pleased pre-decimal half pence I think the deepest I've had has been around about nine inches it was the full depth of the Garrett Pro pointer which I believe is nine inches and that gave a perfectly good 
diggable signal. George V Schillen, which wasn't actually found by me, it was found by a fella called Dan, who I went out metal detecting with. That was a good nine inches, and it gave a cracking signal. It was the first time he'd ever used the Deus. He just walked over this field that I've considered to be absolutely hammered to death, and he just found it straight away at a, at a, a good nine inches, which was very impressive. Musket balls of all sorts of shapes and sizes, down to about six inches. And as we all know, musket balls can give a tricky signal because of the shape. The signals that the machine sends out go down and with it being rounded, they kind of bounce off at angles. So you can get tricky signals. So to dig those down to six inches is pretty good. Military buttons down to about eight inches. It's a reasonable depth for a button. And last but not least, old horseshoes down to about 12 inches. Uh, they are big targets and they all give screaming signals. I don't mind digging horseshoes. I know it's iron and it's not worth anything. But it's just good to see those great big horseshoes come up from those old Shire horses from way back in the day. Have I dug much trash with this? Um, yeah, <laughs> I would say I have. But I do tend to dig bouncy, tricky signals just in case it's a bit of deep silver on its end or at a funny angle or if it's a musket ball or something that gives bouncy terrible signals plus I'm still learning the machine I don't want to dig only the solid signals because I would miss so much so really that's a consequence of trying to dig the deeper targets although I have found lead ring pulls foil as well just the general sort of crap you would dig if you were looking for silver rings and hammered coins. You've got to dig it. There's, there's no machine in the world that'll knock those out. And if you don't dig those, you're not going to find the good stuff. I can't really understand the people who are complaining about these machines, saying the wireless is just a gimmick. They don't go very deep. They're not as good as this machine, that machine. I've got a machine that's 15 years old that's much better than this. I can't understand it because I absolutely love this machine. And that's coming from somebody who really, really loves the E-Track. I love them both. I'm so lucky to have both machines. Yes, they are both expensive machines. But as far as I'm concerned, I work hard. I save money whenever I can. And when I buy something, I want it to be absolute quality. This is absolute quality. I can't think of any negatives about it. No, no, I, nothing, nothing springs to mind and I've written all this stuff down about this machine. I'm thinking about it now, I'm looking at it and I still can't think of any negatives. Possibly the sounds aren't as clear as the E-Track, but I've got the E-Track set up pretty much perfectly for my style of hunting. And the sounds are perfectly adequate, really good perfectly serviceable. At the end of the day I think the perfect detector would be one designed by XP with wireless technology, FPS, so you have multiple kilohertz all firing into the ground, really analyzing the ground, ignoring coke, and the sounds of the E-Track with the design and lightness of this you would have the perfect detector. That's probably not going to happen, because I don't think Mine Lab are going to share that FBS technology. I think it's patented. But in the absence of that, this is the next best thing. Which one would I choose? E-Track or Deus? That is still impossible to answer. People ask me it all the time. They know I've got both machines. Both cost a similar amount of money. <sighs> it's still something that I can't answer. I love both machines. With the 11 inch coil on this, which does go deeper and covers more ground, I may be swayed more towards the Deus simply because of the ease of use, the design of it, pretty much everything about it is excellent. And if it had a little bit more depth with the bigger coil, I would possibly lean towards the Deus. That said, I would never give up the E-Track. I absolutely love the E-Track. I love the E-Track 
I love the Dios. <sighs> love making videos for you guys, and I hope you found this one useful. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. I've certainly enjoyed using this fella, and I'm not an expert with this at all. I would still class myself as a beginner. Still lots to learn about it. I still may get an 11 inch coil as well, but in the meantime, I'm just loving using it with the nine inch coil. It's doing everything I want it to do, except the real depth and discrimination at depth. Um, there's still a place for the E-Track there. When I get the 11 inch coil, the E-Track might take a back seat. Now because I am not a Jedi Master with this, yet, it's only right for me to recommend two good channels of people who really help out their viewers and quite often give settings and search tips with this particular machine. And they are Relic Hunt in Scotland and Peace Havens. Both really nice fellas in the hobby for the discovery of history. They're both absolutely fanatical about it and they both use the XP Deus. So check their channels out, you will not be disappointed. I'm just talking in the UK here, but probably the two main men would be Relic Hunt in Scotland and um, But uh, As far as programs go the um, uh, I can't think uh, what was I going to say there? <sighs> generally, will generally, will mostly read between 70 and 73 depending on soil conditions. <clears throat> I'm so, I'm so,